This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Bhavna Sharma. I work as a medical registrar in the NHS, and I will be specializing in diabetes and endocrinology. Um, today, we're going to be covering OED listening. Um, which is basically, I think it's a subsection which is quite ignored. Um, people tend to concentrate their energy on writing and speaking. And then um, if they want to do a little bit more of practice, they'll go on to reading. But listening in this is the section that we tend to ignore quite a lot. But the problem with listening again is that we find that most of the students that Sometimes they're able to get quite good scores in listening and they're able to get a B or even a B plus. And on other uh, times, then their score drops down to C or even below that. Um, and it's the same student. They think that they've performed the same way, but still they're passing and then they're failing. A frustrating thing about that is um, your writing score is generally consistent. The writing score doesn't really vary. You'll either be a C plus or B if you're at the borderline. And if you reach that B in your writing finally, and you fail on your listening, it's extremely frustrating. So we'll try and figure out how we can um, make our listening scores passing so that then we can concentrate our the whole energy onto our writing and speaking. Another thing about listening is that the way that the human brain works is that you aren't able to read and listen at the same time, unless you're a genius. Um, the, th the thing is that during listening, you're expected to read the questions and you're supposed to listen to what's going on in the background. So practicing and having effective strategies which work for you are essential on listening section. Guys, um, a lot of people, um, they have a problem that uh, centers vary. Some centers, they have headphones and some centers, they've got speakers. So people think um, or people might find that they're able to perform better uh, when they've got headphones or they think that they perform better uh, when it's a speaker which is on. It depends upon you, but depending upon your personal preference and whatever you think works for you and it might help you pass, you will be able to call up the center that you're giving your exam at and verify whether they're going to be using speaker versus they're going to be using headphones. So um, you can try and optimize your performance by finding out um, the same in advance. Okay. Um, just to get a brief background. So I hope everyone knows this already. Um, the listening structure is such that there are three parts, um, which are your part A, your part B, and your part C. Um, you, you allotted about 50 minutes for the listening session, and the actual session itself, uh, which comprises the listening as well as the pauses, is about 40 minutes or so. In this time, you're expected to do about 42 questions. Remember to get a grade B. You need to score about 30 or above. Um, what I want everyone is just to tell me, um, perhaps in a private message, as to um, what their previous listening scores have been so that we can just assess. Um, as to what we can do to enhance our listening scores. So if everyone can just point out what their listening scores have been, and then we can find out.
Okay, so almost everyone has a lot of variability in their OAT listening scores. Um, the problem with that is again, sometimes your center doesn't have clear sound, so that can sometimes bring down your score. Guys, if you think that you've had a lot of problems on your listening section and the sound wasn't clear, um, the OAT gives you an opportunity to complain about it and uh, just to lodge in a report. Um, sometimes we found that when students lodged in a report, they had retesting done. So if you have significant amount of disturbance um, in sound at your center, uh, please make sure that you file um, a report within the allotted time. I think it's about a week. It's about two working after, days yeah. after your exam that you can make in a report and you can um, just submit a report saying that the sound wasn't clear on your um, session. So lots of people are saying that their score either varies above 30 or it's below 30. So that's basically the difference between passing and failing. So we need to definitely work on our listening skills. Okay, now uh, let's move on to listening part A. Uh, so the listening part A is um, just like history taking. What they want to know is whether you'll be able to um, take a good history from a patient. You will be able to identify specific information during a consultation. Um, it's two recorded um, health professional and patient conversations, which are about five minutes each. Remember, the healthcare professionals might be any one of the 12 healthcare professionals who are tested on the OET. So just consider it like a history taking, someone speaking to their patient, trying to take a history out of them. And um, you're just supposed to find out the things that are on your fill in the blanks section. Now, this is what the listening part A looks like. So you'll have your patient details and then you're supposed to fill up particular sections on the um, on this um, question uh, paper. The thing is that you need to remember uh, that your health professional is going to be your guide. So the person who is the doctor or the nurse or the optometrist, whichever health professional it is, is going to point out to specific points in the, um, in the answer sheet where you're supposed to focus your attention to. For example, um, in the example on the screen, they might ask, um, okay, just tell me a little bit more about your symptoms. So basically this is a case of Mr. Ray Sands who's come in with symptoms suggestive of sciatica. So the health professional might ask, um, so how did you basically develop the injury or have the injury or when did the symptoms start? So that will point you to the timing, okay? So uh, they might say that 18 months ago, the patient might say 18 months ago, I had a back injury while doing this, okay? so. Your pointer is your health professional and your information provider is your patient, okay? So try to have that framework in your mind that I will focus my attention to the point that the healthcare professional is pointing to and then I will listen to my patient um, or to the patient when, um, when he's asked the same by the healthcare professionals. So if you tune your mind to that sense, you'll be able to concentrate on reading and listening at the same time. So I'm going to, my keyword or my trigger word will be the health professional asking something. Perhaps he's asked, what do you do? So I'll quickly, quickly go on to occupations. That didn't take much time. So I didn't really, I wasn't really reading and listening at the same time. I listened 
I found my trigger word, which was said by the healthcare professional. I jumped to occupation and now I'm listening for the patient to answer as to what their occupation is. They might say, have you tried any treatment before? And that's my trigger word that I'll jump on to initial treatment and then I'll listen for application of something which provided relief to the patient. So guys, the important thing is trigger word from your health professional, answer by your patient. If you tune your mind like this, you'll be able to jump onto the fill in the blanks very, very quickly. It's extremely difficult and almost humanly impossible to read the whole thing while you're listening because that's just not the way um, the brain works. You shouldn't blame yourself. It's just the way that the human brain works. So try and have that framework in your mind. Please do not panic. If you sometimes, um, some students do say that during the course of um, their part A, um, when the conversation is happening, it's about five minutes time. And some students, they do get nerves, okay? It does happen. What I tell them to do is, if you think you've lost your flow, listen to what the health professional has asked and then jump to what they're talking about, okay? Don't panic. Lots of people, they lose their focus or what might happen is that you, you're listening to the health professional, the patient has, is answering your questions, you're filling up, and then you reach one point where you're not able to uh, fill in some blank. For example, um, we might have missed dash sensation in calves, okay? Don't panic and get stuck here, okay? Move on, remember, the conversation will keep happening. They won't wait for you to find the answer out so if you've missed dash sensation listen for occupation so move on to the next thing okay don't stop here otherwise you'll miss out on the subsequent answers remember you you're not supposed to get everything correct if you get most of the things correct or 80 percent of the things correct you'll be able to pass so even if you've missed something out do not sacrifice that for the next questions. Okay, now some things which you might try and they might work is um, the strategies that I'm giving. I'll give you three strategies. These strategies are to be used when you are reading your question paper before the actual listening starts. Please do not do this when you're listening. During listening, you only do your trigger word, patient answer. Trigger word, patient answer, okay? These strategies are for when you're reading or during your preparation time, okay? So, the first strategy is words that might fit, okay? So, you're reading the sentences. Um, so I'm reading that the patient is Ray Sands. 18 months ago, he's had a back injury while lifting something, okay? So this is going to be some kind of a heavy weight, okay? So I'm going to be looking at furniture, anything heavy, um, perhaps something that they were doing at work, they were trying to lift up a heavy box, okay? So when the health professional is going to ask um, as to what exactly um, precipitated um, your symptoms and the patient mentions back injury it's in my mind that i'm looking for something heavy okay something heavy and that is going to trigger my answer okay then i'll move on okay patient's description of symptoms pain located in so i know it's sciatica so um i might think that it might be um, in a part of his body perhaps the back okay so i'll be looking for parts of the body so that will be my 
in, in my mind that when I'm listening, I'm listening for a part of the body. Okay? That's the way you train your mind to read and listen at the same time. You've made that connection already. Okay. So in your mind, there's a connection already because you know what the question is. So I've made that connection in my mind that I'm looking for pain in a particular part of the body. And once I find that, I quickly write it down. Okay. Then um, it says pain described as. So now I know that it's sciatica. The pain might be shooting down or it might be, there should be some kind of a description word or a descriptive word there. Okay. So then I've trained my mind to do that. Okay. Then I go on to occupation. And it says that and it involves travel and some manual work. Okay. Because they've already said involves travel and some manual work, what I'll be training my mind to do is focus on a particular occupation. Okay? I need the name of the occupation. And I know that it says involves travel and some manual work. So I'll be thinking about jobs like laborers or someone who's lifting heavy things or a construction worker. So those are going to be my on the back of my mind and I'll be particularly listening for them in my listening section. So guys, if you've understood this strategy, please type in yes and then we'll move on. Okay, great. We're going to move on now to our second strategy. Grammar which might fit. Okay, this is especially if you know the use of articles and you know where you use a and an, then that might be quite beneficial because um, sometimes what they might say that application of an dash. Okay, so then you're looking for something which starts with a while and it might help you check your answer as well. For example, if the initial treatment said application of a, a dash provided some relief. So I can't really write a analgesic because it would be an analgesic. So what I might be looking for is something which starts with a consonant. So application of a hot water bottle. Okay, so sometimes what you can do is when you're checking your answers, just make sure that it grammatically fits onto your fill in the blank. Okay, um, again, this says dash sensation. Okay, so your sensations always end in ing. So burning sensation, tickling sensation, pricking sensation. So you need, when, when it says sensation, it should fit grammatically. The patient might say something which ends in a ing. Okay? So this is another strategy that which you can do. It's particularly useful when you're revising your answers. So make sure that when you're revising them, the words or the, uh, the sentences make sense. So it should be burning sensation, application of a hot water bottle, application of an analgesic. So this is, that's what you're going to be checking your answers by. Okay, so the last strategy which some people do like to use is that they apply their medical knowledge 
to their listening scenario. It's going to be a history taking scenario. If you already know the disease, you can anticipate the history that the patient is going to give you. Okay. So in this case, it was sciatica. I know that sciatica is usually a pain which is in the back or might radiate onto the legs. So I'm going to be looking for that history. If I miss something, for example, if I'm listening and then my brain sort of gets blank, then what I might do, I might just fill up the medical knowledge that I already know. Okay. Um, I know that uh, sciatica might be a tingling sensation or a burning sensation. So I'll just write that down. Okay. Um, so sometimes if you think that you've missed out, don't leave the answer blank. Fill it up with your medical knowledge, okay? And you just might be correct because there are no negative marks. They aren't going to cut your marks for giving out a wrong answer. Don't leave out blanks, okay? Just guess something which you can guess from your medical knowledge. So try and do that. Try and use these three strategies. So strategy one, I'm going to be using it when I'm reading the task. I'm anticipating the words which might fit. Strategy two, I revise by grammar, which might fit. So the words should be grammatically correct. I'm in particular looking at your ing ending words and my um, articles. And my strategy three is for just filling up answers which I've missed or anticipating answers by using my medical knowledge. So the medical knowledge strategy can be used in both your planning and your revising. So if you've understood these strategies, uh, just type in yes, and then we can move on to the next section. Very good. Um, what I'll do now, is I'll just try and get a scenario on. So what I'll do is I'll play the scenario and what I can do is when you're answering for this scenario, um, you have to do, uh, you have to uh, put in one and then the answer, two and then the answer so that I can understand what answers you've given. But please type onto the chat window rather than um, saying it out loud, okay? So we'll play this scenario. Um, you've already had quite a lot of time to read this scenario before and I've explained it as well. Try and use the strategies um, which um, we gave out and um, use these strategies to fill up this task, okay? So I'm going to play the scenario now. If you're able to hear, please type in yes. Occupational English test. Sample test one. Listening test. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different e extracts. Okay, so the sound is working. Just going to begin the session again. Occupational English test. Sample test one. Listening test. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different extracts. At the start of each extract, you'll hear this sound. You'll have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you'll hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you'll have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, 
a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with information you hear. Now look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1, questions 1 to 12. You hear a physiotherapist talking to a new patient called Ray Sands. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. You guys, please make sure that you're using strategy one. Come in. It's Mr. Sands, isn't it? That's right, it's uh, Ray Sands. Now, I think you've been referred to me because you're suffering from sciatica. Uh, that's right, uh, not for the first time, actually. OK, well, I've got some notes here, but perhaps you can tell me in your own words about any previous bouts of sciatica you've had, uh, what treatment you had, what worked for you, anything else you can remember. Right, so, well, it all started when I hurt my back. Ooh, about uh, 18 months ago now, okay. I was giving somebody a hand with a heavy suitcase and I felt it go, oh. you know, woof, just like that. Mm. Anyway, I slowly got over that, despite occasional flare-ups, and then, out the blue, about a year ago, sciatica developed. Mm. Mm. And it was six months till that finally cleared up altogether. Now it's come back in, well, in the last month or so, I'd say. I see. And your GP said it was sciatica? Yeah, I had this pain all the way down my right leg mm -hmm. and she said the real problem was in my back because the sciatic nerve was getting trapped. Right. I mean, I'm telling you, this was no ordinary pain. It was really intense. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the extent that I couldn't stand for very long, couldn't walk hardly any distance, I couldn't sleep. Oh, I mean, oh, the most frustrating bit for me was that I couldn't even turn over in bed. It just hurt so much. I just couldn't get comfortable, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd have a sort of um, tingling feeling in my calves as well. Right. But then at other times, my whole leg just well, felt a bit numb, really. It, it was weird. And of course, I couldn't go to work. I'm an events organiser, so I travel about a lot, I'm setting things up for conferences, lugging stuff around, you know, and so there was no way I could manage any of that at the state I was in. Okay, so how was this treated? Well, uh, in the first instance I was given painkillers, obviously, uh, ibuprofen, as far as I can remember. Right. Uh, and I was told to put compression packs on the affected area. I mean... That did ease the pain a little, but I was still housebound, practically speaking. Okay. Uh, then the GP sent me to see an osteopath, and I got some treatment there, but it didn't seem to make much difference. Right. So I was referred to a sports injury specialist, of all things, uh, and he did um, a number of things that did seem to ease things a little, like working on my spine and lower legs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he, he gave me a set of exercises to do at home. I see. And um, any other treatment? Uh, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. There was this course of injections, and I went for various other therapies, like ultrasound, and another one where they do, well, they use, like, electrical impulses. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Okay. Um, at one point, I even considered acupuncture. But by then, the other things were beginning to take effect, so the symptoms were subsiding, so uh, I gave it a miss. Mm -hmm. So, which of these various treatments do you feel was most effective? Uh, what made the difference? Mm, well, I couldn't say for certain, because it all went on for four months without much improvement, really. But it wasn't until suddenly in the fifth month, things changed quite dramatically. So to be honest with you, I think it was the combination of treatments gradually taking effect and coming together rather than one single thing making a difference. Okay. 
And did anyone ever talk to you about what might be causing the problem? Well, I think everyone assumed that a slipped disc was behind it all, but right. it was never actually confirmed as that. I mean, I know there is this other condition uh, where you get a lot of pain in the buttocks, but that wasn't my experience. Okay. And did anyone talk to you about aspects of your lifestyle that might be contributing to the problem? Well, uh, I remember actually there was one... All right, so people have started um, giving out answers, which is good. What I want everyone to just focus on the fact that um, how difficult it was to listen and read at the same time. So it's very important that we prepare um, when um, we're given that time during the speaking set uh, during the listening section what another thing that you could have done um during this session um during this um scenario is that um he talks about something he talks about a lot of things which don't really matter um, to the conversation and then he suddenly mentions sport injury specialist you should remember that just before that he was talking about an osteopath okay so sometimes they might do that trick as to they'll talk about something which isn't really um in the task or it's not going to be something that you're going to be focusing on and then they'll suddenly say something which is on your task you must remember that just before that they um, mentioned the osteopath and that was your question so make sure that when you're listening you're still paying attention to what is being said because they might give clues as to what the previous or the next thing might be it's especially useful when they have these full sentences um, like the sports injury specialist or they've got electrical impulses and epidural injections so when you go to the further treatment section it talked about epidural injections and then there was a dash so your mind should be okay i'm listening for i'm list, uh, i've listened to epidural injections there's something which is going to appear before they mention electrical impulses and that's what i'm supposed to fill in there okay so when you're actually listening to what has uh, what is being said you need to focus your attention on the point which is being talked about okay so they're going to talk about occupation and you've answered the occupation point and then you're listening at for initial treatment you've listened prescribed NSAIDs so you tick that on your mind and you know that the next thing which is going to come in quite shortly is going to be application of something which provided some relief okay so lots of minor things which they try to trip us up by um i can see the answers we so lots of people have answered diksha uh, diksha was able to answer almost everything um what diksha has written is that she's answered um right leg okay so she said pain um, in the right leg while tabuya has said pain down the right leg okay so tabuya what we discussed was um the strategy two it said that the grammar should always fit okay if you expand your second um sentence you would say uh pain located in down the right leg okay so that's grammatically incorrect right so when you're revising your answers please make sure that when you fill it up then you you uh, you read it in your mind okay so your sentence won't really make sense even though what you've said is probably a better description of the pain as um, as it being radiated down the right leg but because they've said pain located in you have to make you have to make it grammatically 
correct okay so lots of good answers um this is from the official um website so you can revise this scenario again if you want but i just want to focus your attention on uh, the strategies that we're using um, and how we can use each of these strategies onto your future session. So you guys, um, that we're able to um, just know the strategy one, which is anticipating words, your strategy two, which is going to be grammatically correct, very, very important. Um, and your strategy three, which is filling things up with your medical knowledge. Okay. And remember, you always, when you're, you're training your mind to do the OET listening, while you're listening, your eyes should be on the section that they're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Aries has asked, can I ask the question how to recognize compression pack or compression pad? Okay, so Aries, um, if you think about it, um, medically a compression pack and a compression pad are both the same thing. Um, so it depends a lot on your accent, um, on the accent of the person who's speaking it. So if you're talking about American accent, the compression pack and pad might sound quite similar because that's just the way the American accent is. If you've got someone who's speaking with a British accent, they're going to emphasize on the D. So they're going to say compression pad, okay? Because that's quite, uh, that's a British way of talking. But compression pack, compression pad, both should be correct. But if medically something works more than the other, for example, um, in this case, compression pack versus compression pad, I know that compression pack is probably the more medically correct thing. So I would write that if I'm confused, okay? For example, when I was hearing for osteopath, if I get confused whether it's osteopad or osteopath, I know that medically osteopath is right. Okay. So if you're confused, Aries, use your medical knowledge and answer your question as to being medically correct. Okay. If you've understood that, please type in yes and then we can move on. Excellent. Um, we're going to move on to our listening part B now. I hope everyone's happy um, with listening part A now. At least you've got something in your hand that's going to make you a little bit more um, empowered or perhaps more confident um, when you're going to be doing your listening part A. Guys, if you're happy with listening part A, please type in yes and then we'll move on to part B. I don't want me um, to dribble uh, on and uh, you're not understanding anything. So make sure that you type in yes if you've understood your part A and then I'll move on to part B. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, we're going to move on to listening part B. Okay. So listening part B are your short workplace extracts. Um, they vary a lot and um, they might be team briefings handovers or health professional patient dialogues. Okay? Sometimes they might just be someone talking about a disease. So they vary quite a lot. So practicing is very important so that you're familiar with the fact that they might throw anything at you. The main purpose of part B is 
that you're able to identify the detailed gist opinion or purpose of extract. Remember when we talked about reading part B and C, we identified that what they want us to do or what the OET wants us to do is the ability to derive um, meaning out of your um, listening or derive meaning out of your reading. Okay. So the same thing in listening part B is that it's your ability to derive meaning out of a conversation. They're going to talk a lot, okay? You'll have someone who's talking a lot about a patient. You're not really interested in that patient. But what OET wants you to do is when people are talking or people are giving their history, you should be able to identify the purpose of this long lecture not long just a minute lecture but you're able to identify what is the essence of the session okay um you are supposed to answer one uh, multiple choice question for each extract i'm sure everyone knows that now when you're preparing your part b you identify your two things okay you identify your speaker and you identify the then text, okay? You identify who's talking. Is it a nurse? Is it a doctor? Is it a patient? Is it a medical lecturer? Is it a medical student? You identify who's talking to whom because that will train your mind to know what exactly is going to happen, okay? So you've identified your speaker then you identify the context what are they talking about is it a history is it um, a patient handover is it a surgical discussion quite often it comes a lot in your um, oet surgical handovers is it two radiologists discussing something so you identify the context as to why are they talking to each other now you focus, once you've done that, you've identified your speaker, you've identified your context, you focus your attention onto the question stem, okay? You ask yourself as to what type of a question is this? Is this an opinion? Am I supposed to find what this person's opinion is about a certain disease? Is this a concern? Is this patient talking about something that he's worried about? Is there a particular thing that he's worried about? Are we looking for a conclusion or a result? If someone's talking or two people are discussing something, is my question to find out what the result of this discussion is or what the conclusion of these two people discussing something is? It might be that two people are planning something okay or they plan to do something during the course of this conversation they might trip you up that they might have two plans they might have an immediate plan and they might have a future plan okay so you're supposed to if it's a planning question you need to find out what the plan is and when is the plan for is it an immediate plan or is it a future plan so your answers might is it a causation what causation basically means is that you're able to find the cause of something um, or your speaker is saying that something is related to the other thing and there's a causatory relation or causation relationship okay an example of this is um, that the speaker might say that um, tuberculosis um, has been uh, described a lot in um, South Asian literature. Probably that just might arise from tuberculosis being quite common in South Asian countries. Okay, so the fact that tuberculosis is common in South Asian countries is the causation for tuberculosis being more described on their. Um, in lecture by South Asian countries. Okay, so the speaker might be looking for a causal relationship. Is it a diagnosis? Is it someone or a doctor or a nurse 
who's trying to talk to a patient and trying to figure out the diagnosis or trying to tell the patient about the diagnosis? Is it just a history taking? Is the question asking me to identify a particular fact from the history that a patient is saying? So it's very important that you identify these three things. You know your speaker, you know why they're talking to each other, and you know what the question stem is asking you to do. You might be wondering why did I give you this long lecture about the type of question or the question stem? You need to have your trigger words ready. Okay? Once you've read your question stem, you're going to put some trigger words in your mind. So when you're listening, you're listening for your trigger words. That's how you train your mind to read and listen at the same time by forming a relationship in your mind. Okay? If it's an opinion question, so um, they're asking you as to what is the author, what is the speaker's opinion about this? Your trigger words are going to be the speaker saying, I feel, I believe, I think, I'm of the opinion. Okay. So once he said that, that's going to trigger you. And then you go through your answers and you just listen for which option they're going to tell you. Okay. If there are concern questions, okay, is there something in particular that the patient is concerned about? The question might ask you, what is this patient's main concern? Your trigger words are going to be, I'm worried. I'm a little bothered about. I'm a little skeptic or frustrated. Okay. So in your mind, once you've read that, it's a concerned question. You're going to be looking or you're going to be listening for the patient to say these things. Okay. They might be synonyms of these things, but basically they go through the same um, set of words. Conclusion. Okay. Conclusion. So when two people are discussing something, um, you might, um, they might say, this has resulted in, we have found that's been the worst thing or the best thing. Planning. When they talk about what's the plan for this patient's discharge or what's the plan for this patient's um, care during the night, your trigger words might be the doctors or the nurses discussing, we would need to, this patient may need. Okay. Diagnosis, you might have tuberculosis, it is likely that you have tuberculosis. So that's how, those are going to be your trigger words. Causation, you're looking for things like, it's likely to be related to, there is a clear relationship, I might be because. So because and related are going to be your trigger words for a causation type question. History, can you tell me a little bit more? I need to find out a little bit more. And whatever they tell after that is going to be a part of your MCQs. So a useful strategy, which you might employ on your listening part B. Trigger emotions. It's, a, it's an excellent strategy that you can use. Um, opinion. When someone is trying to give out an opinion, they usually do it with a particular emotion. Okay? The way that the OAT uh, listening works is that they try to make it sound natural. Okay? So when in real life, you're trying to give your opinion about something, you're going to have that particular tone to your voice. Okay? Does the subject sound defensive or sound argumentative? Are they giving an opinion about something? So look for that emotion of sounding uh, confident, sounding like you're defending something or sounding like you're arguing. Concern questions. If 
a patient is concerned about something, his voice is going to change or her voice is going to change. Oh, doctor, I'm a little worried about this. So look for that tone, okay? Train your mind that when you're looking for concern, you sh the patient will appear concerned, okay? Conclusion. So usually conclusions, they come at the very end, okay? And they are, uh, they are also associated with a certain emotion, okay? What's being decided is that we're going to do this for the patient, okay? So there's a definite okay before that, or there's a definite end to the conversation. All right, now that we've discussed everything, we're going to do this, okay? So that's going to be your conclusion uh, emotion, okay? So trigger emotions can be used for opinions, concerns, and conclusions, okay? Try and use these. These are just going to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, now what we'll do is um, I want you to use the trigger word strategy. So the same thing, you're going to identify the speaker, going to identify the context, and then you're going to identify what kind of a question it is, okay? I won't play the actual um, scenario right now. What I want everyone to do is you have to tell me what is the, what, who is the speaker? or who are the speakers, what is the context, and what is the question stem about, okay? So we're going to try and figure out how we're going to plan our listening part B, okay? So what I want everyone to do is tell me or type onto the chat window, who are the speakers in question 25? The question 25 is actually the one which is on your left. So you have to tell me who are the speakers, what is the context, and what is the question stem. Guys, I need all of them rather than one. So Ashwarya, Tabuya, Zana, I need the speaker, the context, and what is the question. Excellent. Now what I'll do is you've made your planning, you've done your planning. Now what I want everyone to do is listen in, use the trigger word strategy, and try to solve question number 25. Part B. In this part of the test, you'll hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare setting. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You'll have time to read each question before you listen. Complete your answers as you listen. Now look at question 25. You hear an optometrist talking to a patient who's trying contact lenses for the first time. Now read the question. Oh, 
Now, you've had the lenses in for a few minutes. How are they feeling? Not bad. I thought I'd feel them actually touching my eyes, that they'd be sore or prickly, but I can't feel much at all. My eyes do feel a bit watery, though. It's okay. You've just used too much solution. Now, in a few minutes, I'll get you to try taking them out and inserting them again by yourself. I had no trouble taking them out earlier, but I'm not confident about putting them in. I worry I'll press too hard. That's unlikely to happen. Things look rather distorted, though. I mean, I can't make out the letters on that chart. Any of them? No, those lower down. Let's give things another minute to settle down. Okay. We've started getting answers and it's pretty much a divided house. Okay, what we'll do is um, some people have said A and some people have said B. Okay, we'll try and listen again and we'll concentrate on the patient's tone of voice. Okay, so when you're concerned about something, then your tone of voice changes okay so we'll try and use that strategy and listen again and then i want everyone to tell me if they would change their answers just 25 to 30. I can't make out the letters on. I thought I'd feel an actual patient who's trying contact lenses for the first time. Now read the question. At all. I thought I'd feel them actually touching my eyes, that they'd be sore or prickly, but I can't feel much at all. My eyes do feel a bit watery, though. It's okay. You've just used too much solution. Now, in a few minutes, I'll get you to try taking them out and inserting them again by yourself. I had no trouble taking them out earlier, but I'm not confident about putting them in. I worry I'll press too hard. That's unlikely to happen. Things look rather distorted, though. I mean, I can't make out the letters on that chart. Any of them? No, those lower down. Let's give things another minute to settle down. Okay. We've listened to the tone of their voice, okay? And some people have changed their answers now. For people who said B, did you hear anything which was uh, similar to soreness in his eyes? He said that his eyes were watery. So when your eyes are watery, that's a bit different than soreness in his eyes. For people who've said C, how to remove the lenses, when he said that um, he's not really bothered as to how to remove the lenses, he's got problems putting them in, okay? For people who've said A, the patient suddenly sounded extremely hesitant when he was talking about his, he, sta he started sounding a little bit worried when he started talking about his blurred vision. You also heard the nurse getting a little or the optometrist getting a little concerned as well, okay? For the previous thing, she was, she said for the watery eyes, she said, oh, that's all right. You can just put a little bit of, uh, you put a, a lot of solution and that's why your eyes are watery. So she sort of flipped that, okay? And the patient was like, okay. Then the patient started talking about um, uh, that he's got some problems in his vision and then he stopped, okay? And then the nurse said, okay. Let's give it a little bit of time, okay? 
because the patient moved on from watery eyes and taking out and removing lenses that's why the correct answer should be a okay zana um you've said soreness in his eyes let's try to listen again and use our trigger word strategy if you're making this mistake a lot and you're confused in between the options what i would recommend is having trigger words you've got quite a lot of time to read this scenario what you can do is you can try and have trigger words for your options okay so if it says blurred vision then there might be a talk about the vision not being that good or he being not being able to see things properly so that's going to be your trigger word for that soreness in eyes might be described by the patient as pain or irritation rather than watery okay watery is just the benign feeling of feel, uh, feeling that your um, eyes are putting out a lot of water but soreness sore in english means painful or something which hurts so your trigger words would be the patient saying oh my eyes are hurting or oh, my eyes are so painful okay how to remove the lenses you, you, they'll talk about okay let's see how you remove your lens or let's see how you're able to take off your lens okay all right let's try and uh, listen it again and sana uh, let me know if you have still have any issues in this part of the test you'll hear six different extracts now you've had the lenses in for a few minutes how are they feeling not bad well, i thought i'd feel them actually touching my eyes that they'd be sore or prickly but yeah. i can't feel much at all my eyes do feel a bit watery though it's okay you've just used too much solution now in a few minutes i'll get you to try taking them out and inserting them again by yourself i had no trouble taking them out earlier but i'm not confident about putting them in i worry i'll press too hard that's unlikely to happen things look rather distorted though i mean i can't make out the letters on that chart any of them no, those lower down okay so zana has said that she can hear sore and tickling we'll just go back and then we'll listen again now you've had the lenses in for a few minutes how are they feeling not bad i thought i'd feel them actually touching my eyes that they'd be sore or prickly but i can't feel much at all my eye so zana what he said is that he thought that the lenses might feel like something in the eye they would be sore or tickling but then the patient says i thought it might be sore or tickling but i can't feel much at all okay so zana i think the problem is that you're not you're not listening very very carefully what i would advise you to do is when you're doing your listening um try and get a center who's got headphones and try and turn the volume on a little bit more because you're missing things like that uh, i felt like it might feel like sore or tickling what you heard was it feels sore and tickling okay so you need to concentrate on your positives and your negatives if the patient says it doesn't feel like this if you're not paying attention if the patient says okay the pain uh, uh, the pain doesn't feel like uh, something very very severe or the pain doesn't feel very severe if you're not paying attention what you'll only hear is that the pain pain feels severe rather than doesn't feel that severe okay so now if you've understood why that option um, was incorrect please type in yes and everyone else who said that the option was b guys you need to concentrate they'll trip you up okay so the oit wants you to make mistakes okay they'll try and do this to you they'll have the trigger words in the conversation but they'll have a positive or a negative attached to it and that's what is going to bring down your marks okay 
this is a very very common examination trick that if you if you're just looking at the options and you're not really listening the moment you hear soreness you're just going to tick that okay and that's what's going to trip you up sp if you paid attention to your um, patient emotions you should have been able to eliminate the part um, the option c very very early on okay so pay attention to patient emotions listen very carefully okay now we're going to do another scenario um, we're going to do um, question uh, 28 before attempting i want everyone to tell me guys this is just you might have seen these questions before but the point of this is that you develop a strategy for your future oat listening sessions okay it's not about getting the right answer or the wrong answer it's a question of developing your strategy and working on that strategy to make sure that your marks are okay all right um now what i'm going to do is we're going to move on to question 28 what i want everyone to tell me is who is the speaker what is the context and what type of question it is All right, for people who've said um, agreement or method, this was actually a conclusion type of question because two people are discussing about the type of scan that they're using, uh, they might use, and then they conclude on the method that they should use. Okay. What we'll do is we'll play the scenario and then we'll see if we'll be able to use our strategies. Okay. I've just had a phone call from an emergency. They have an 11 year old boy with right lower quadrant abdominal pain. They're concerned about appendicitis and they'd like to order an abdominal CT for him. Mm. Do you think that's a good idea? Uh, I was thinking maybe we should recommend an abdominal ultrasound because then we can spare him the radiation. Is there any concern in this case around using ultrasound instead of CT? Accuracy, for example. The sensitivity is slightly less than the CT, but the specificity is almost the same, so I think we can rely on the results. Okay. It means we can avoid the child being subject to contrast exposure as well. But what would we do if the ultrasound doesn't answer the question? If we can't visualize the complete appendix, then we can recommend an abdominal CT. Okay. We have a plan. Call them back and let them know.
Question 29. You hear part. All right. So a mixed bag again. Zana, we just checked um, the answer. Um, it's from listening subtest um, part B. And the answer is blurred vision. It's not soreness of eyes. So I'm not too sure where you've seen the answer soreness in his eyes. But on the official website, the answer is definitely A. Okay. So again, lots of mixed answers but actually quite a, a, a better performance than the last time. Um, most people have said C, have the fewest risk for the patient, okay? Um, Jabin, Aradna, Karez, okay? Option A, they've written, allow them to see the whole of appendix, probably give the most uh, accurate results and C is fewest risk for the patient. So at the end, we hear that the radiologists are going to do an ultrasound. Okay? So it says they agree to choose the method which will. So the method that they've chosen is an ultrasound. Now, the ultrasound will not allow them to see the whole of appendix and will not give the most accurate results. Okay, If you substitute if you read the question stem, it says they agree to choose the method, okay? So that should give you a clue in your mind that they're going to talk about a specific method of scanning, okay? The specific method of scanning, which was the conclusion, was that they're going to do an ultrasound for the patient, okay? So if I cut the method and put in ultrasound which is the method that they're going to use the answer would be c okay so it's a question of reading the question stem and then paraphrasing or forming trigger words for your question stem and then answering it appropriately okay so they do these two tricks okay the positive negative thing that they'll give you a trigger word but attach a negative uh, thing to it which will make your trigger word wrong and the second thing that they'll do is that they'll point to things like the method the book the individual so they'll point to what they, they're trying to see is whether you know the difference between a and the so when you use the term the, it points to a specific thing. The specific thing was a specific type of scan that the radiologists are concluding to do. Okay, so they concluded to do an ultrasound, and the ultrasound would have the fewest risk for the patient. So, Jabin and Aradna, if you've understood the point, please type in yes, and then we can move on. Excellent. I just wanted to let you guys know, um, I'm not trying to point out your mistakes or trying to make you feel bad that you've made a mistake. It's just that uh, if you're making a mistake here, this is a safe space, okay? No one's going to judge you. No one's going to um, think that you don't know, uh, you don't know medicine or you, you're not uh, good at English. This is just a space for us to solve the problems that we're having in listening. The reason why you've joined this session is because you've had issues in listening and that's why you think you need help with it. So if you make mistakes here, it's completely fine, okay? It's just a way for you to learn from your mistakes. And I'm happy that you're making mistakes here because now that you've made a mistake, it's on your mind that I can make this better and your score is going to improve. So 
don't 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 feel bad that you've made a mistake okay all right now we're going to move on to listening part c okay guys if you've understood listening part b please type in yes and then we can move on to listening part c excellent um i just wanted to mention quickly um with the um, listening part b and part c it's like the mcqs that you give um you know the pmt mcqs or the nursing entrance mcqs that you give they always try to trip you up okay so watch out for things with negatives and positives okay this used to come quite a lot um on our uh, pmt exams where we were supposed to um, it said that um, which of the following is not an appropriate treatment and then the people used to take the first option because that they thought that it was appropriate treatment um so this happens quite a lot on your oet so they use the same strategy um so guys make sure that you watch out for negatives okay all right so i think everyone's understood which um, is a good thing um we're going to move on to listening part c everyone hates listening part c they think that it's the worst of all listening sections um listening part c definitely is difficult compared to your uh, listening part a and b i think a is the easiest one uh, because it's quite intuitive as well um you're able to use your medical knowledge to um answer most questions but because oet listening part c is a lecture which might be um, on unfamiliar topics and quite advanced topics sometimes and it might be a presentation on an interview which in, uh, introduces healthcare topics which might be unfamiliar to you so you lose that crutch of um, using your medical knowledge but still there are some strategies which you can use on your listening part c guys remember to pass if you score well on your part a and part b even if you're bad at part c it's uh, not going to make you fail okay so don't get depressed if you're very bad at listening part c as long as you're scoring above 30 or 32 then you're fine you're in a safe space okay So your part A is going to have about twenty-four questions. So to pass, if you score good marks in your part A, you need very, very less to pass. Okay. So listening part C, um, you've got two different extracts, which will be quite long, about five minutes each. So very long um, uh, presentations. Uh, you've got six multiple choice questions for each extract. So this is what um the listening part c looks like basically in listening part c um what you guys should remember is that it follows a flow so the information for question number 31 will um be before the information for question number 32 so when you're training yourself to do your listening you focus your eyes sequentially okay you don't make your eyes jump from 31 to 33 and then back to 32 because the answers don't come that way um uh, it's humanly impossible to remember the whole of the speech um and if you're jumping from one question to another while they're talking then you're going to lose your flow okay so train your eyes to move sequentially from one question to another i found lot of my students they make this mistake as um, they get blank during uh, the five minutes that they're talking and then they lose their flow um if you've done that okay um we'll do the trigger word strategy but let's just try and focus on the type of questions first okay so two types of questions which might come on your oet listening are your opinion type and your incomplete question type okay so your opinion type questions will be things like why does dr robson regard Ch chagas disease as a neglected disease um dr robinson says that the concerns in chagas might be due to so 
says regards that means that it's a specific person's opinion okay sometimes you can get incomplete sentence type questions which are basically going to be um, a patient called marisol recently asked dr robson to test her and then that okay that's going to be your incomplete sentence type questions okay if you've got opinion questions then you use the same strategy of your trigger words you're going to look for things like i'm worried i think i feel it might be i'm of the opinion so once the speaker says that that's going to trigger you that my opinion question is going to get answered now and then i listen to the opinion and choose the best option okay the way that i do this is when i'm listening to your uh, to the scenario um, i've already read it i've already um, uh, answer um, answered in my mind as to whether this is an opinion type or an incomplete sentence type question if i think it's an opinion type question i am listening to the speech and then i'm looking for dr robson to say i think okay so that's the way i would solve opinion type questions how would i so uh, how would i solve the incomplete sentence type question you might have some names okay you might have some names on your uh, presentation okay for example in question number 33 which is the last question on this which is the incomplete sentence type it says a patient called marisol okay so marisol is a very unique name okay the time it appears when the speaking uh, when the listening is happening when i listen to marisol okay that's my trigger word that my question is going to get answered okay so your trigger words for incomplete sentence type questions can be names which are unique investigations which are unique so use them as your trigger words guys if you understood the trigger word strategy please type in yes uh, because i think it's a very very important strategy for concentrating on listening please type in yes if you've understood and then we can move on to the next one okay very good um moving on the thing about uh, listening part c is that you're supposed to use your preparation time extremely wisely okay don't waste your time because it's going to be a long presentation five minutes listening in exam conditions is extremely difficult believe me so use your preparation time to train your mind okay you read the task decide on your question times you anticipate trigger words for concerns you anticipate synonyms for fill in the blanks okay sometimes um on your um question stem um you might have things which you might need to make synonyms for okay um a patient called marisol recently asked dr robson to test her for chagas because so my synonym for recently might be um that they might talk about oh just the other day or um just before we came in so anticipate that you might have synonym so synonym for recently might be uh, uh just before this or um last night or last month so recently you will have something which points to this thing happening um in the uh, in the uh, past quite recently but my trigger word would still be marisol rather than synonym synonym to use when you don't have any trigger words okay if you've done all of this um if you've read through the task you've decided on your question types you've anticipated trigger words you've anticipated synonyms if you still have time guys please read only the questions okay um don't expect you to be a um, superwoman or superman um reading the whole uh, mcqs is extremely difficult okay um your mind will get very very tired okay 
um, because you're supposed to, uh, there's a long, there's six questions, six MCQs, um, quite heavy, difficult MCQs. You read them whole and then you listen to this five minutes lectures, your mind will get tired, okay? The attention span of the human brain isn't that much, okay? So what you have to do is you have to focus only on the important things, okay? If you're revising and you've still got time, do not read the options. You have time to read the options when they're talking, okay? And why are you uh, listening to the option? Uh, why, why are you reading just the things only when they're talking? Because you won't be able to remember. So read only the options. Zana has said, if possible, can we just underline the main point? Yes, yeah, Zana, you can do that. Um, or you can just... If you just underline the main point, what might be problematic is that your mind might not be trained to hear for synonyms or negatives. So what I would advise is you identify the main point and think about synonyms rather than underline them. Because then what will happen is the thing which happened with the soreness of eyes. If you just underline soreness of eyes, the moment you see that, you're going to tick the answer, okay? What I would advise is that you identify the main point in your mind because why are we doing this we're trying to make the connection between reading and listening okay the way that we do that is by identifying the main point of listening by reading first okay so it depends upon you whichever works for you just see uh try all of these strategies guys before you're giving your exam don't try them on exam day otherwise you'll come and um, tell me that I told you wrong things. Um, just revise everything or revise the strategies before your exam time and get comfortable with these strategies. Um, see what works for you. If Zana underlining the main point works for you, then use it. Otherwise, um, you've got lots and lots of things that you can do to make your life easier. Okay. What we're going to do is we'll do another exercise. We'll do an exercise on reading part C now. Um, you've already done um, the question. What I can do is we can do one of these questions. What we'll do, we'll do question one. Before I make you listen to the task, what I want you to do is you need to tell me what kind of a question it is. Because we've already discussed 31, I'll change the question. I want you to tell me um, what type of question 36 is. Is it an opinion question or is it a fill in the blanks question? So question 36 is the one which is the last one on your right side. Okay, so people are saying that it's a fill in the blank question and some people are saying that it's an opinion question. So this is a trick question. This is both a fill in the blanks question and an opinion question. But I would lean more towards the opinion side because the way that it's said is Dr. Robson thinks the short term priority. So the thing that we're looking for is Dr. Robson's opinion or Dr. Robson's thoughts, okay, because he thinks that way. It might not necessarily be true. So I would say that this is an opinion question. Okay, now what we'll do, um, we'll just do one question. We'll do question 31 um, and we'll see who does this the fastest. Part C. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear health professional expert on Chagas disease. 
expert on Chagas disease. You now have 90 seconds to read questions 31. All right, we're just going to give it some time for you guys to just go through the question. Today we're talking to Dr. Jack Robson, a cardiologist and Chagas disease specialist in the USA. Dr. Robson, what is Chagas disease? And why is it referred to as a neglected disease? Chagas is caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. Most sufferers become infected when they're bitten by an insect, commonly known as the kissing bug, which carries the parasite. Right. People often don't realize they've been bitten, and during the initial phase of the infection, symptoms are normally mild or absent. Okay. 70% of those infected never develop complications. For the other 30%, the disease tends to remain silent for a long time, often 30 years, but it eventually enters a chronic phase characterized by... Okay, now I want you to tell me the answer for question number 31. I'll give everyone time to respond. All right, so quite a mixed bag here. Um, people have answered A, B, C, and it's almost the equal. What we'll do, we'll listen to this again, and then if someone wants to change their mind. Um, so this question is an opinion question. Your trigger word is neglected disease, and then your answer is going to follow, okay? 
you might use the elimination uh, you might use a hypothesis strategy like we used in our reading part c you can guess which answer um, is correct you can write down the correct answer or think about the right answer and then um, uncover the options and see what works for you if anyone wants to change their answer you have to type in your new answer and tell me why you've changed it okay All right, so for people who answered A, that is the correct answer. But if you answered A after the snippet that you heard, you probably have cheated. Okay, the reason why I gave you a shorter snippet first and a larger snippet after that was that if you're not listening properly, you're going to miss out. Okay? In the first snippet, it talked, uh, Dr. Robson talked about um, that most people don't realize that they've bitten, uh, been bitten, um, then it becomes like a chronic disease. Um, and then he talks about funding and the fact that the funding is limited because it affects the South American population which is marginalized. What marginalized means is that it's um, ignored or, you know, uh, uh, margin basically means something which is at the side. So people are kept at the side or they might be ignored. Okay. So the point of this exercise was that you need to listen to the whole scenario to get your answer. If your attention span is less and you don't listen to the whole thing, then that's going to trip you up. So people who said C or B, you weren't incorrect because you didn't listen to the whole thing. What I mean to say by doing this, I don't want to, um, I don't want to make anyone feel bad or feel insulted. Um, the point of this was that if your mind goes blank or your mind doesn't make you listen the whole thing, and you're missing sentences in between, then you're going to score less marks on your reading part C. So reading part C is a question of attention, okay? Even though they're talking for five minutes, you have to remain alert for those five minutes, okay? The way that you do that is that you identify your question type, you identify your trigger words, and then the whole concentration is on what they're talking about. I hope that's a little helpful. Remember guys, never lose your flow. Okay. It might happen that at some point during part C, your attention would get diverted. Perhaps someone's dropped a pen or 
um, your examiner has cuffed um, or the something has happened which has made your mind divert for a second if you do that you're going to lose your flow and remember all of the mcqs are in order so if you miss out on one then uh, or you stop listening to uh, after one or you get stuck on one question then you're going to stop listening and you're going to lose your subsequent mark if you've lost your flow go back to your trigger words look for names look for opinions and then answer your questions okay so that was the end of our session on oet listening guys i've i hope that you've learned something about oet listening the essence of oet listening is getting your strategies right um, being attentive on that examination day if you still want to practice your listening you can go to the official website and practice as many questions as you want uh, what you can also do is you can try and listen to English um, songs or English movies. Some people like that. And uh, don't look at the subtitles and try to concentrate on what they're speaking because spoken English is quite different from written English. So uh, developing that flow and developing that habit is very important, especially leading up to your exam day. Um, you can visit us on teachyouracademy.com for our blog and our writing and speaking check. Hopefully that should be useful. If you are interested in our group discount, uh, the phone number is on the screen. You can contact Dr. Prashant for the OAT group discount and that might help you. Guys, I hope you've understood something from our lecture and hopefully this has been useful to you. Please type in yes if this has been useful to you. And if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them now. Otherwise, we'll wrap up today's session. Um, guys, please make sure that if you've liked this lecture, please um, give us a rating on um, Google. Right? Thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you're keeping safe and um, you're doing very well. Um, good luck everyone.